Hi, I'm Holly Greer with the Alachua County Environmental Protection Department, and this is the Water Wisdom Series. In today's episode, we're going to be exploring sinkholes, and right now we're at Devil's Mill Hopper. Um, it's a great spot to see if you haven't checked it out. It's really worth visiting. It's a massive sinkhole and just a really interesting geological formation that we have in our community. Let's start our exploration of sinkholes where we are. Devil's Mill Hopper is a collapsed sinkhole in Gainesville that is about 120 feet deep. You can think of that being about the height of our football stadium here. When the stairs are open, you can hike down into the sinkhole. There are lots of plants growing, small streams, and miniature waterfalls that carry water back underground. The temperature gets much cooler as you climb down and it looks like a small rainforest. Ancient shark's teeth and the fossilized remains of extinct animals have been found in sinkholes of this size and depth and have helped scientists learn more about Florida's past. You may have seen some of Florida's natural history described at the museum. We know this area was once covered by the ocean and it's pretty cool to imagine that giant megalodon used to swim where we now walk. The limestone rock that lies under Florida was actually formed over time from the remains of ancient ocean animals and other materials that hardened, and it's a part of the story of how sinkholes form. Florida has what's called a karst landscape. A karst landscape forms when underlying rock like limestone is slowly dissolved. When rain falls, water becomes slightly acidic as it moves through the soil and decomposing plants and into the limestone layer below. Limestone has been compared to Swiss cheese due to all the tiny holes of different sizes within it. Water travels into the limestone and through these tiny holes and other cracks and carries some dissolved limestone with it as it travels. Underground pathways, caves, disappearing streams, springs, and sinkholes all result from this process of erosion over long periods of time. When enough space is created in porous rock like limestone for water to be stored and moved underground, this is called an aquifer, and the water in it is called groundwater. The aquifer beneath Florida is called the Floridan Aquifer, and it's where we get all of the water we use for everyday activities, and it's the source of our drinking water. It's also where our springs and some of our rivers receive their flow. The water in the aquifer is important to people, plants, and other animals. The Floridan Aquifer stretches roughly 100,000 square miles and lies underneath the entire state of Florida and part of Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina. Here is a picture of the incredible aquifer below. Pretty impressive, this is right beneath our feet. Now that we've learned a little about karst landscapes, the aquifer, and our connection, let's return to the subject of sinkholes. As the spaces created by the dissolving of limestone become larger over time, eventually there may not be enough support from the rock below, and the surface sediment may sink or collapse into the open space. This is a sinkhole. There are different kinds of sinkholes and they form in different ways. You can learn more about those differences on the U.S. Geological Survey website. Let's talk with a geologist and look at a few different kinds of sinkholes here locally in Alachua County. Hi, I'm Betty Rosenblatt from Alachua County Environmental Protection Department. I work in the Natural Resources Program and I'm a geologist. Um, I decided to go into geology because I wanted to study the ocean um, and that's called oceanography. Um, so one of the things you must do first is pick a different science to go into and I picked geology. I fell in love with geology so much I just stayed a geologist. Back in the day there were not many women in my field um, it has changed since then. 
Anyway, today we're here on the west side of Alachua County, one of the best places to find um, sinkholes, and we're going to go take a look at one. Here we are at a chimney sinkhole. It's actually called a twin chimney because it's got two sides. What we're noticing is there's something that kind of looks like a mossy bed and the little land bridge between them. But you know what? It's a rug. And we find more trash too. There's a television in there. Underneath this area is caves. And for whatever reason, that one's blocked up. But see the trash? More trash. Here's the rug that Betty was talking about, and as we looked down the chimney sinkholes, there was more trash. Unfortunately, in the past, sinkholes were often used as dump sites, especially for larger items. It's not uncommon to find old stoves, refrigerators, or televisions in them. So, why is this um, natural resource, significant geologic feature, so important um, to protect? Um, our groundwater is below the ground at depth and sinkholes are an opening from the top of the earth down to our drinking water. So anything that gets around them or put in them that is not natural can cause our drinking water to become polluted um, or contaminated. So that's why we need to protect them. Because sinkholes provide a direct connection to our drinking water supply, organizations like Current Problems, with the help of many volunteers, work to clean out sinkholes that have been used as dump sites in order to help protect local water. Now we're sitting on the side of the twin chimney that's actually deep, and we see a cavern, which is really cool. So cavern's an opening that goes underground and you can't see where it goes. There's more trash at the bottom, which is unfortunate. Um, but it's a beautiful, um, it's called a big chimney. Uh, there are other kinds of sinkholes though. Um, this one's kind of special to find. Um, some of them are just shallow and they're very stable depressions, kind of like a real gentle uh, bathtub. And they're old, old sinkholes called paleo or relic sinkholes. Um, the other thing that happens in this part of the county, especially a lot, the west side of Alachua County, are little chimney sinks. They can be repaired and then they're usually a one-time thing. So there's different kinds of sinkholes. We were fortunate to have a guest join us on our last sinkhole exploration. So here we are in front of a paleo sink. We talked about how its names are um, paleo and relic, and that just means the word old. They're very stable. It's that gently sloping bathtub. Most of the time, sinkholes form gradually. Occasionally, though, a collapse can be sudden and cause problems when there may be houses or other buildings in the area. You may have heard about the large sinkhole that formed recently in a Gainesville neighborhood. Sudden sinkhole collapses can sometimes result from either too little or too much water. Groundwater normally fills in many of the open spaces created in limestone and acts as a support to the rock. But during a drought or when too much water has been pumped out of the aquifer for human use, these spaces may empty out and become unstable. On the other hand, when heavy rains occur, the pressure of the weight of pooled water may cause a collapse from the surface. Sometimes sinkholes may not be obvious. The sinkhole here at Payne's Prairie, called the Alatra Sink, is beneath the water and leads to the aquifer. Many of our creeks flow to sinkholes. Much of the water from the east side of Gainesville travels here. We'll end our exploration of sinkholes here. This photo is of the deepest known sinkhole, the Zaiyao Zai Chen King, located in China. Thank you for joining us to learn a little more about sinkholes and their connection to local water. Join us again for another episode of Water Wisdom and learn more about how you can help to protect local water.